the fading narcissist. I have explained how we draw fuel from primary, secondary and tertiary sources. These sources vary in potency and are affected, of course, by the method of delivery of the fuel. The primary source remains our most important source of fuel, since it is this person, usually the intimate partner, who we are with more than anybody else, but also the person who has the greatest emotional reaction to what we say and do. Accordingly, this person provides us with the most fuel and of the most potent kind. The primary source is naturally the most important fuel provider, which is why we seduce this person with such dedication, unleash such a terrible devaluation, and keep on hoovering following escape or discard. We make such an investment in you as the primary source that we regard it as our right to keep drawing fuel from you, whether that is positive or negative, whether it is now, next week, or in ten years' time. The secondary sources are those which contribute good fuel and are invariably those who are part of our facade. Our lieutenants and the members of our coterie are drawn from the secondary sources, friends, family and colleagues who we interact with frequently, but not to the same extent as we do with the primary source. Nor do the secondary sources give out the same heightened fuel as the primary source. In some instances it is close, and the secondary sources serve an excellent function as part of the facade, and the maintenance of this facade is important. Therefore, we prefer to keep the same people in it, and keep adding to it. Secondary sources enjoy lengthy golden periods with us. This is because our call on them is intermittent, and therefore we are far less likely to regard their fuel as stale. Moreover, we can have many secondary sources, but we can only ever have one primary source. Thus, if a certain secondary source is perhaps not admiring us as much, but they are not criticising us, and therefore they are still providing us with some fuel, it does not merit a devaluation. They remain loyal, they remain part of the facade, and we will just switch to another secondary source to increase the fuel. There is no need to devalue or ditch the initial secondary source. Thus, you may see our kind have a friend who is flavour of the month, because their fuel is better than other secondary sources, and then the fuel dips in quality. But it is not a concern as we can add another secondary source, or switch to another, who perhaps we have not seen for a couple of months. This is advantageous, as it means our energy can be saved for devaluing the primary source, whilst keeping a range of functioning secondary sources on hand, and the facade intact. The secondary sources very rarely stop providing positive fuel, they have no need to. A primary source may stop providing fuel as a consequence of the descent into ill health caused by the devaluation or, alternatively, learning how to tackle our kind as a response to the abuse that they are suffering. The secondary source, almost always treated to the golden period, has no need to adopt a stance of not providing fuel. A secondary source may, however, criticise us, and if that is the case, they may be subjected to devaluation, but usually they are excluded from the coterie and replaced easily enough. They will be smeared and made to feel like an outsider, with the narcissist using the facade and other secondary sources to achieve this aim. We like to create our cliques, and if anybody threatens our supremacy or delivers a criticism who is a secondary source, they will be ejected from the group. The occasion for devaluation of the secondary source is rare. It only happens in two instances. Firstly, the source has criticised the narcissist and thus fury is ignited and the narcissist decides this person must be made an example of before being discarded in order to show the rest of the coterie who is in charge. 
Secondly, in an even rarer instance, it may happen when the narcissist has no primary source. If there is an absence of the primary source for a period of time, say a number of weeks, the narcissist's fuel levels will have been tested. He will have sought to seduce and embed a new replacement primary source. And most times, the narcissist in such a situation is able to do so with success. However, let us assume this has not happened. The narcissist turns to his secondary and tertiary sources, more on tertiary in a moment, and relies more than usual on them to provide him with fuel during the absence of the primary source. At first, there is no problem. The secondary sources provide positive fuel, which is sustaining the narcissist. But if he has only a few secondary sources, then it will not be long before his fuel demands outstrip the positive fuel they can give. The lesser quality of their fuel, compared to the primary source, is being exposed by the absence of the primary source. It is also because greater demand is being placed on them. Ultimately, the primary source will always go further for the narcissist than anybody else, and they are also far more proximate. No matter how seductive, if the secondary source has to deal with his own family, his work and so on, he may not be able to provide fuel. If this keeps happening, combined with the increased demand and the lack of a primary source, the strain on positive secondary sources will start to tell. This means that the narcissist will either have to add new secondary sources and or devalue the secondary sources to shift to negative fuel so that he is sustained. This will work for a period of time with the confused inner circle friend who is a secondary source trying to work out why their supposed best friend is ignoring them and then trying to patch up the relationship. A secondary source, however, will not sustain devaluation as long as the primary source would do and may even infect other secondary sources by pointing out how they are being treated by the narcissist. In this instance, the narcissist is already suffering reduced fuel levels, and the supremacy of his facade is being challenged. This increases the demands on him. The tertiary sources provide the least fuel, and generally they are also treated to lengthy golden periods. For example, the lady who works in the petrol station or the postman, since they are only extracted from on an intermittent basis, the golden period can last a very long time. Tertiary sources can also be used straight away for negative fuel, for example, upbraiding a waiter or shouting down a shop assistant. We do not regard them as necessary to the maintenance of the facade. Their negative fuel provides a useful boost, and such high-handed behaviour may impress a primary or secondary source who witnesses our behaviour, and thus we draw positive fuel from them where appropriate. If there is no primary source for a period of time, the reliance on tertiary sources also increases. There will be increased activity to use technology to draw these people to the narcissist, such as on dating sites, chat rooms, or through social media. But if the reliance is frequent and sustained, the quality of the fuel will diminish quickly, and those who have been attached to the narcissist in this way will be discarded and replaced with new remote tertiary sources promptly. There will be a high turnover. At the same time, the narcissist is likely to lash out at physically proximate sources more often and will do so more and more as the fuel level drops. This happens for two reasons. Firstly, he needs the fuel more than ever from tertiary sources and negative fuel is more powerful than positive. Secondly, he will be furious at being placed in this position through having no primary source, but he has not got one to lash out at. The tertiary sources also bear the brunt of this rage. A narcissist without a primary source will eventually alienate secondary sources and, in certain environments, say a small town, will struggle to replace them as people become wise to what he is. He may lack the energy to keep up the turnover of remote tertiary sources, and spends his time lashing out at those which are physically proximate. At this point, the narcissist faces losing the facade, since so many people now see his behaviour. In order to keep drawing fuel, he now has three choices. One, seek a new primary source immediately. Two, move his environment 
so he can seek out fresh secondary sources and tertiary sources in order to rebuild his facade, or sink into depression and inactivity as his fuel levels plummet. In such an instance, the narcissist becomes a fading star. Once, because of the primary source, the narcissist was a brilliant, magnificent and illuminating individual. However, the loss of the primary source and inability to find another means that the alluring shine is fading as a black hole awaits. The secondary sources are drawn on, but ultimately they become exhausted or alienated along with tertiary sources. Accordingly, you can see just how paramount the primary source is to the existence of our kind and why we make such an effort to secure them, replace them and hoover them back again.